Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Suham Business and Motivational Call. It is Wednesday, so you know, and it is 9 a.m., so it is that time for us to get it going with the Wednesday call. Glad you guys are here. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you decided to be here with us today on Wednesday, and we appreciate you. If this is your first time tuning into the call, please know that we have this call every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we also post the replay on my blog at suham.com, and we also post the replay on our social media sites, which you can find on my fan page at suham, S-U-E dash H-A-M, and also on Twitter and LinkedIn. So um, we're excited today to go ahead and get kicked off. Before we get into it, you know we have to do the general housekeeping rules. I am your host, Solandia Hammond, a.k.a. Suham Baby, a published author, motivational speaker, playwright, and the co-founder of the Business Explosion Mastermind with my friend and partner, Terry L. Clay. So excited, guys, to let you know that we are headed to Mexico in October, and if you would like to be a part of that luxury learning experience where we actually take in 14 entrepreneurs under our wings uh, to teach them various themes from making money online to sales funnels to the psychology of sales, publishing their books, marketing, um, how to create products, and so many other things. If you're just excited about that, you're even remotely interested in uh, coming to that event, then I encourage you right now to go to the website, businessexplosion.net, businessexplosion.net. And also on tomorrow night, Thursday night, Terry Clay and I are having a webinar where we're going to teach you how we have made close to six figures online using videos on Facebook and YouTube. So you definitely don't want to miss this free webinar. Want more information on the webinar, hit up businessexplosionwebinar.com. You see that? You see the congruency? Businessexplosion.net to go to Mexico and travel with us luxury style. To learn more about how you can use videos on social media to make up to six figures or more, then you want to be on the webinar Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, no recording. So if you're not there, you miss out. Simply go and register because seating is limited. Go and register at businessexplosionwebinar.com. And, guys, for all your social media needs, if you're looking to get more training, definitely head over to the website, suham.com. Now, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into today's show. I'm very excited to have today's guest. Um, she was telling me a little bit about her story, and I was just really amazed by it. And I was like, you know what? I want you to come on my show, and I want you to share just a little bit of your story with the audience. And if they want more, they can buy your book or they can talk to you. But I just want you to share just a little bit of your story. Uh, guys, today's uh, guest on the uh, show is Pastor Julia Nolan. Now, she hails from Georgetown, South Carolina. She became a minister in 1999. Now, she got that call to come to ministry while in a coma. So uh, she is uh, the pastor of Harvest World Harvest Church Ministry. She's also an author. She loves to preach, teach, write inspirational books, and counsel people on marriage. And I'm excited to welcome Pastor Julia Nolan to the show today. Welcome, Pastor. How are you? I am doing great, and I thank you so much for inviting me to talk about the word that God has put inside of me to give to his people. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, first of all, we got to get into it, right? I like to get into the meat and potatoes. We've only got about 10, 15 minutes, so we can't share everything, but we'll tell everybody where to find you and how to get a copy of your book or how to get you as a speaker later on in the show. But the first thing I want to do is talk about um, – you know, how you began writing books. And what, you know what, let's even go before that. Before you began writing books, what were you doing? I was a registered nurse. I worked in the field of the medical and the uh, psychiatry, and the Lord allowed me to go into a coma back in 1999, and while I was in my coma, I met Jesus. He was standing at a pulpit, behind the pulpit, and I did not speak the whole time that I was in heaven. And the first words I heard from Jesus was, now is not your time. You have work to do. 
Of course, at the time, I uh, knew I was a nurse, but I wasn't thinking of ministry. That's what he was thinking about, and that's why he stood at the pulpit to show me what I supposed to be doing. And so you so you let me get this right for everybody that's listening. Let me paint this picture because I'm fascinated by this story because I've watched shows on TV where people say they have an outer body experience or where they've died and they kind of like see past relatives that may have gone on before them, and I'm really intrigued about the afterlife, and so. Let me get this right because I want to make sure that we are conveying the right message to the audience. Thank you. But you were in a coma for 10 days, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And while in a coma, you actually had interaction with Jesus, and at that time he told you that to leave your secure job of nursing for 30 years. Amen. To go into ministry? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> of all the things, ministry. <laughs> ministry. And the reason why I say that is because I think that being a police officer, being a parent, being a teacher, and being a minister are the hardest positions in the world. So what were it you is. thinking? Uh, walk me through this. What were you thinking when you were going to ministry? And you're like, no, I got a good paying job, Jesus. Come on now. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, like most people, I ran away. I probably ran away longer. Like I tell people, I was like a Jonah. I might have been worse than a Jonah. I mm-hmm. ran away for many years because I was thinking in my own understanding, how was I going to make it? How was I going to make it? But I had to build my faith up, and that took years for me to build my faith up and depend on God because I was just thinking about me. How was I going to make it without my job and um, leaning on my own understanding? But the Lord uh, gave me faith. He gave me promises that he would take care of me. And I'm just so happy that I am. And I am in obedience now, but I have disobeyed for many years. I want to go forth and do what he has placed inside of me, do what he has told me to do. And one of the things is to write this book. uh, God is the one that gave me the name of my ministry, World Harvest Church. And he told me I will write books. God do not ask questions. (laughs) He give commands. Now, let me ask you this, okay, because I'm still here. I'm still, you know, right now, mentally, I'm in, I'm in the hospital room with you right now. You're in your coma, and you are having this vivid, you know, uh, vision. You're there. What are you feeling? I mean, what, I mean you, what's going through your mind? I mean, you're in a coma. I mean, that's like a way, uh, uh, you know, somebody told me that that's like some of the best sleep that you will ever have. Are you having flashbacks of your life, or are you just getting the instruction like, this is what you're supposed to do with your life right now? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you seeing? You know, I I knew I was in a strange place. I didn't know what all to expect. Because when I first realized I was in this strange place, I was in a holding area then I heard something like a little something unlocked, and that was the time for me to move out of my little holding area. And then I looked, I saw Jesus walking near me. So then I just automatically began walking near him. But, of course, where he came from, oh, man, it was such bright, beautiful light where he was coming. You know, light always emanates from uh, Jesus. So I began walking towards him, but when he stopped at the pulpit, I just automatically stopped. I was maybe like, I don't know, um, uh, 18 um, feet away from him, and I okay. stopped. Okay, but I, I know everybody who's listening, they're wondering, what did he look like? Oh, man. He looked very similar to what I would say most of the um, – but anyway, it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to say how he um, – he had the long, dark, you know, dark colored looking. I don't know if it was dark brown, but he was dark colored. He had the dark brown hair, and a veil was over his face. But I was still was still able to see through the veil. And, wow. Uh, yes, and he, I must say, I must say, he did. You know, he had the 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 complexion, the nose, and he's tall, at least six feet or more. 
But even more interesting than that, and people can get a better description of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's in my book too. That's uh, when he gave me the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He revealed to me um, an image of all three of them. So when, you know, if I begin to describe him, I would really want to describe all three. You might not have time, but it's in my book. Okay, okay, okay. But, and we're gonna we're gonna tell people where to get, where to get your book in a few minutes. But let me ask you this: You awake from the coma. What happens now? You've been given instruction that you're to leave your thirty year nursing job, secure job, good paying job, to go into ministry. You awake from the from the coma after being under for ten days. What do you do now? What I did now, um, when I woke up, my doctor was at my bedside, family and friends, they were at my bedside. I stayed in the hospital for about uh, two more uh, months. And, it, you know, it was a, a long recovery, about two, I don't know, two, two years. But I began thinking of all of my problems, the relationships, in one way, mm. blah, 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 blah. and then one day I just said to God, I said, God, I just feel that you want me to teach. I said, but I'm a nurse, but I think you want me to teach. And I said, Lord, if you want me to teach, then I want to teach at a college. I wasn't thinking, you know, he had already told me I'm in ministry, but I told him, I said, I want to teach at a college. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I, remember I went to sleep because during that time I had to have frequent naps. And um, and I remember in my dream, he spoke these words. He said the church should be uh, a higher institution for learning. Oh wow, wow! So he so he placed my mind right back where it's supposed to be on ministry. And and of course, I again, I I still did not go into ministry right away. And I went to Bible uh, college um, for a couple of years. But during those years I was in Bible college, the Holy Spirit was teaching me like I was in the school of the Holy Spirit. For almost 12 months, as soon as I would wake up in the morning, he had a word for me. And during the day. Okay, Pastor Julia, let me ask you this. All right, so... You then began to write your book, and your book focuses on relationships, um, how to have a better relationship. Now, and I, and I want to say this, what, you know, how do you, do you feel like people should take you seriously on telling them how to have a great relationship considering that you're divorced? And, and if you don't mind, because, you know, people are skeptical. A lot of times people don't want to take advice from somebody uh, teaching them how to make money if they're not a millionaire themselves or if they're not already having success. And I think that really we should shift that mindset because uh, just because you may not have it does not mean that you're not qualified to be a great teacher on how to get something. And I think a lot of people have that mindset. But did you face problems with people saying, well, how are you going to write a book about how to have a great relationship and you're divorced? Did Did you incur any of those kind of problems or naysayers? People have not said it directly to me, but I'm sure they have thought of it. But one thing I want to say is that this word of God is very serious. This book is very serious. You see, God is not just concerned about you and I living on this earth. He is concerned about you living in your eternity with him. This book is written so people can come out of wrong relationships to God successfully. We want to have a relationship with Christ now, but also in eternity. I've seen visions on hell, and I'm sure you all have read books on hell and heaven. Hell is not a place for people, but people choose to go there because they reject the word of God. My, the word of, in my book, Arise, lines up in agreement with the word of God. And one thing I want to say. 
Okay, okay. I wanted to say something um, because something that people don't understand is that I think that you're qualified to write the book on relationships. And I say that because a lot of times when you go through something bad in your life, you don't necessarily have to be 100% successful at something to be qualified to teach. Amen. If you go through something bad, you are qualified now to teach and say, listen, this is what I went through. Let me uh, deter you from that so that you can have a better route. And I'm leading up to your ex-husband. Can you tell us a little bit about your ex-husband and what happened to your first child? Back in 1979, when I married my husband, of course, he became my ex-husband, and then later on he committed suicide. But when I married him, before I married him, I had prayed and asked God if I should. I still remember his words, do not marry him. Well, you know what? I'm going to stop you right there and let you continue your story. But it's funny. We all get these urges. We all get these uh, uh, um, alerts from God or from friends or whatever that tells us we shouldn't do something, but it's funny that we do it anyway. So go ahead. So point number one, listen to the urge, listen to the voice. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor Julia. Yes, I heard the voice of the Lord say, "Do do not marry him, of course. I married him probably in another month or so, and shortly after that, I learned he was not saved. I learned he had an addiction to alcohol and drugs. Unfortunately, we divorced about seven years later, and shortly after that, he committed suicide. And when he committed suicide, he had broke into the home that me and my daughter, um, we had an only daughter, one daughter. At the time, she was around two years old, and he broke in, caused a fire, and our only daughter died from smoke inhalation. Wow. Wow. Um, and for many years, I suffered a lot of emotional pain, and I, was, I, I got in and out of relationships seeking to heal my emotional pain. But after all of those years, I found healing in the power of God. And he taught me peace. He said, seek peace at all costs. And that's what I do. That's what I teach. This word, this word here lines up with God's word. And one of the things people say, they can understand my book better because they can understand it because of the way it is written. God guided me to write this book. I wasn't interested in being a minister. I wasn't interested in being a writer. I was interested only in nursing. But his spirit gotcha. came upon me so strongly I had to obey him. And I'm really glad I did. I'm glad for the position that I'm in at this time. My And my ministry is going to be where I know God has called it. He says this is a ministry that preaches to the nation. Preaches to the nation. Right. This message is for the nation. It is to it's to bring the family unto subjection of the word of God. Right now the okay. family is out of control. Okay, and I do, I do agree. When you look at the media and everything that's going on, you're absolutely right. Well, Pastor Julia, we do have someone else that is on the show today. We've got Terry L. Clay coming up. So before we let you go, what I want you to do is tell everybody where they can find this book. Guys, if you're just tuning in, I'm talking to Pastor Julia Nolan, published author as well as the pastor of World Harvest Ministries, and she was just outlining how she was in a 10-day coma and how she was called into ministry while into that coma. And when she awoke, she had to walk away from a 30-year, secure job of nursing to go into ministry. So uh, if you want to know more about Pastor Julia, you'd like to hear her speak on your program, on your radio show, or at your event, or if you just like to connect with her or get her book, she is now going to tell us how you can reach her and how you can get her book. You may reach me and you may get my book. You can dial 843-991-9760. My book is on Amazon.com. It's on, uh, you can get it through Barnes & Nobles. You can get it through OutSearchPress.com. That's O-U-T-S-K-I-R-T-S-P-R-E-S-S.com. You may get it at M-A-R-4 at S-C.R-R.com. So please get the book. This is a book for all generations to come. You will be blessed. Now, where can they find you on Facebook? 
You may find me at Junior um, Nolan on Facebook, a World Harvest Ministry, World Harvest Ministry um, on Facebook, World Harvest Ministry. Oh, man, this is awesome. Listen, I tell you what, your story is incredible. I wish we had more time. So you guys, please connect with Pastor Julia Nolan at World Harvest Ministry. That's M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, that's singular, on Facebook. And uh, she's also giving you her contact number, and you can also get her book at Outskirts, um, Outskirts.com, is that correct? Right, Outskirts Outskirts.com. Outskirtspress.com. And, guys, a copy of this um, poem will be posted on my social media site at Sue Ham. All right, thank you, Pastor Julia, for your time. We now have uh, Terry Clay on the line. And Terry Clay is going to come in. You, are, you guys know Terry Clay is my great friend, as well as my business partner for um, the Business Explosion Mastermind. And Terry is going to come in and just talk a little bit about what we got coming up on Thursday as far as the free training that we're inviting all of you to come out to. And what, Thursday is what, May 7th? Is that correct? I think that's right. So, Terry, are you here with me? Hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, hey, Terry Clay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Terry Clay, real quickly, in about five minutes, let everybody know what's coming up on Thursday. And, guys, right after Terry Clay, we are going to give you an opportunity to ask questions. So Pastor Julia is still on the line, so if you have any questions for her or any questions for Terry, we're going to um, open a line up for about two minutes for questions. So, Terry, real quick, tell them what's coming up on Thursday. Well, we have this outstanding webinar. Yay! We um, It's a free <laughs> webinar, and it's about um, how really how we've been making five figures, close to six figures, simply using videos. Yay! <laughs> and as we know, Sue has had some videos to go viral, um, both of us really, but Sue has had mainly had one has I think, over 7 million views. Is it more than that now? Uh, it's probably more than that now, man. This thing, yeah. you know, just when you think a video has died, it comes to somebody resuscitates it and brings it back to life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's, and, it start, and all of a sudden you'll start saying, hold up, I think something's going viral because, you know, you can start telling that you're getting a lot of something that's drawing all these people to you. And one of the things about the blessings about things going viral is that that's what happens. It's all of a sudden you start getting all these friends requests and you'll start getting – uh, people like your fan page, and you don't know where it's coming from. It's just, just like blowing up all of a sudden. And it, that's what you – and, you know, the thing about it is you can turn fans into money, you know, your fan page or your Facebook friend page into money. And so the, you bring them to Facebook via via things that you got going on. Going on. So we're going to be teaching that on uh, Thursday of how you can really kind of change the game with videos. Absolutely, and it's happening at 9 p.m. on Thursday, May the 7th, 2015, and you can register. Seating is limited, so register right now at uh, businessexplosionwebinar.com. And one of the things I like, Terry, before I let you go, one of the things I like that you said is we're going to teach you how to sell without selling because so many people want to say, get my product, buy my product, and what Mm. we're going to show you Mm -hmm. is how to attract people, like you said, fans, people, your audience, and then how to sell them without selling them. So you definitely want to get on this webinar happening on Thursday. Thank you, Terry. Um, yeah, sure. Awesome. For anybody that has questions or comments, we still have Pastor Julia Nolan on the line, and now uh, we have Terry on the line. So just hit star six, and you'll be put into my question queue. Uh, we're actually going to actually keep your comments and everything or your questions to about uh, 60 seconds. Um, and for those of you who just press star six, you'll automatically be placed into my queue. And, guys, just so you know, guess what? I'm going back into the lab again, and uh, we are going to be bringing salon drama, my stage play, to a couple of areas in late fall of this year. So stay tuned to my social media page, Sue Ham, to find out what's going on. Um, doesn't look like we have any comments or questions because it starts six. Star six going once, going twice. If no comments or questions, we are just going to invite you guys to come back out on Wednesday, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our next show. I'm going to see if we're going to try and get Latria White on the show. She's a phenomenal coach, and uh, she's got some great things going on with her. And shout out to everybody who attended the Business Exposure Mastermind in Florida. Um, they are doing some phenomenal things in their business. Go check out, uh, I hope I don't forget anybody, Melanie Edge, Cheyenne Rory, Vanessa Hoots. 
Patria White, Sharice um, Norwood, uh, Lorraine Chapman, Tanika Sherrod. I hope I didn't forget anybody. Did I forget anybody, Terry? Um, I think you got everybody. Uh, these ladies Melanie, are Melanie, all, Melanie, Melanie Edge. Melanie, Melanie Edge. Edge. <laughs> yeah, these ladies are fire. Go connect with them. Um, and if you want to join us in Mexico, come with us. Uh, actually, one of the ladies, um, Vanessa Hoops, just secured a fifteen hundred dollar client on yesterday. Uh, so Whoa. we are excited about that. And all of the ladies are winning. They're publishing books. They're speaking at colleges. They're selling books. They're getting new coaching clients. They're getting on radio. They're getting on TV. Um, they're creating products. They're affecting people. They're changing lives. And so if you want to be a change agent, right, we're asking you to come out. Check us out. First, get on the webinar tomorrow, free webinar at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, businessexplosionwebinar.com. And then from there, we want you to find out more about how you can become a part of our community where we uplift and uh, get people to the next level at businessexplosion.net. Well, guys, you already know, right? In parting, I have to encourage you to live, love, learn, and laugh. Don't quit all your dreams to success. We'll see you around the Internet.